Ukrainian forces claiming a major military victory as UN officials express heightened concerns over shelling near a massive nuclear power plant and a temporary halt on the construction of Friendship Park, the latest in the saga. Plus. Dangerous conditions along the coast as remnants of Tropical Storm K lingers. The chances for showers and thunderstorms in the county and when we could see some relief from the humidity. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. Well, San Diego is still dealing with some pretty unusual weather. Good evening, I'm Neil Watson, and some areas are being hit harder than others. ABC 10 News meteorologist Megan Perry joins us with where we stand with the weather. Megan. You know, my dad doesn't complain very often, and he is just like, I'm done with this humidity. <laughs> and I think a lot of us agree. It has been so humid for the last month, month and a half, and the last few days in particular because of the remnants of Tropical Storm K, which is moving away from us, but we're still feeling the impacts. Not so much in the form of rain as Pinpoint Doppler Live does show dry conditions across the county, but a few sprinkles to a pop up shower or even thunderstorm will be possible through Monday. I'll talk more about that in a little bit, but I have to show you some of these rainfall totals. Mount Laguna picked up over five inches of rain so far. Julian just shy of four inches and in the desert areas where we saw Pretty dramatic flooding on Friday. Borrego Springs picked up over an inch and a half of rainfall, about a half an inch in Santee and about 6,500s in downtown. Really dramatic, beautiful clouds over Chula Vista this evening. 75 degrees. It is another warm night with that dew point in the 70s. It is still extremely humid. Tomorrow is still going to be muggy. We're going to see 80s for most in the county. And again, anything from sprinkles to a stray thunderstorm will be possible. I'll show you that using 10 News Futurecast in your full forecast. Nia. Megan, thank you. Our beaches are still feeling the impacts of K from high surf to rib currents. There are some things to keep in mind this weekend. ABC 10 News reporter Madison Weil is on the Ocean Beach Pier tonight, breaking down the current advisories. Well, it wasn't the perfect beach day. It was a little windy, a little overcast, but apart from the gloomy weather, there are a few other reasons you should steer clear of our beaches this weekend. The aftermath of Tropical Storm K up and down the San Diego County coastline. I went out this morning. It was pretty fun. It's just a lot of wind right now. Uh, the water's still not 100% clean. You can tell by the murky, murky water. Murky water from all the debris and runoff from San Diego streets that sadly ultimately makes its way to the sea after a storm. That's why the Department of Environmental Health and Quality has issued an advisory recommending that people avoid swimming, surfing or diving for about 72 hours following the rain. That's especially in areas near storm drains, creeks or rivers. I went over to the boat launch and there was hardly anybody there. It's usually packed with people out there in boats. The beaches noticeably less crowded. Also this weekend, there's a threat of lightning, rip currents, and four to six foot surf. We're hoping to get some good waves at the jetty. Maybe like there's always pretty good rights at the jetty. Of course, some surfers couldn't resist an opportunity to catch some of those larger waves. We spoke with several in OB, but after paddling out, they say everyone should watch out for the rip currents. We actually had to, me and this other guy had to go and like save, save two guys that got ripped out in the rip current. We kind of saved them from getting sucked out to sea. Don't go in the ocean if you don't know how to swim though, because it's really dangerous. So a good idea to avoid the beach if you can, but if you are going to be heading out, then just be sure to double check any signs that may be posted. We do expect those rip currents and high surf through Sunday evening. In OB, Madison Weil, ABC 10 News. And as Madison mentioned, a beach advisory is underway, warning people of both sewage and urban runoff along our shore. Let's take a look at the county's website. It shows the entire coast from IB to Oceanside, yellow and red. We sent ABC 10 News reporter Sierra Encinas to Imperial Beach to see how the latest closure is impacting the city. Warning, beach water may contain sewage and may cause illness. Signs like this are nothing new for Imperial Beach locals. In fact, sewage issues have been a concern for decades. It might not look like it with dozens casting lines and others catching waves. 
but sewage is pouring into the South Bay. Many IB locals and regulars are no longer phased by the contamination because they say it's expected. Every time there's a big storm, and even without the storm, there's always contamination here in Ivy. Fonzie Piao was among the crowd of people fishing. He and most others aren't concerned about the potentially contaminated fish. People still eat the fish. When now post-tropical cyclone K made its way to our border region, the overflow of water running through the Tijuana River broke the berm barrier. Now, the National Boundary and Water Commission says millions of gallons of sewage as well as rain and treated water are likely already in the ocean. It's definitely something people can smell, but just like the fishermen along the pier, local businesses aren't too faced. Our food's that good. You don't even care if it smells like <laughs> sewage on occasion outside. Jenny Johnston works at the Ivy Forum, a locally owned sports bar. She says this village has never really impacted business. No, everyone at Ivy kind of just jokes that at this time of year. Locals ABC 10 News spoke to add they don't think the ongoing issue will improve anytime soon. The South Bay isn't the only area that should be concerned about runoff into our ocean. There is a rain advisory that's anticipated to be in effect until September 12th due to urban runoff. In Imperial Beach, Sierra Encinas, ABC 10 News. You can get updated weather alerts sent to your phone by downloading the 10 News app. It's free on all app stores. Well, police have identified the victim of a shooting in the Shelltown neighborhood. It happened just before 6 p.m. Monday on Una Street, about a block away from Cesar Chavez Elementary School. That's where officers found 40-year-old Mario Galvez. He was shot several times in the upper body and head. He was taken to a nearby hospital where he was pronounced dead. Detectives say the suspect left the area and possibly a mid-sized sedan after the shooting. He's being described as a heavy set male in his late 20s and mid 30s. Anyone with information is encouraged to call the homicide unit or crime stoppers. Well, tonight, the sheriff's department is looking for a homeless man who threatened a grocery worker with an ax. Now, this happened at Sprouts Farmers Market on Lemon Grove Avenue and Lemon Grove around four this afternoon. Deputies say the man entered the store and was shoplifting when an employee approached him and asked him to put the items back. At that time, the man pulled out a hatchet style ax and threatened her. The man then left the store and headed toward the trolley station. He is described to be over six feet with blonde hair, wearing black calf high snow boots. If you see him, call the sheriff's department. Now to a 10 news follow up over the construction of Friendship Park. Today, community leaders met with border agents to discuss the potential change. Immigration advocates are worried the construction will make it difficult for families to continue using the park as a place where people can reach across the border to embrace loved ones. That construction includes two new 30 foot walls. Border Patrol says the wall changes are necessary because of corrosion to the existing barrier. There's been a pause on construction, so meetings can take place. Border advocates will present the latest information from today's meeting on Monday. And a major moment in the war in Ukraine this weekend. Ukrainian troops saying they've beaten back Russian forces in the country's east, successfully retaking at least one major city there. ABC's Jay O'Brien has the latest. A counteroffensive by Ukrainian forces now punching through the Russian front line in the country's east. Ukrainian troops liberating the city of Izium in the country's northeast from Russian control, advancing rapidly. Russia's troops abandoning the city, its forces in Ukraine's northern Donbass region in disarray. The Kremlin not acknowledging a retreat. The defense minister instead saying the decision was made to regroup their troops. The Ukrainian counteroffensive helped by billions of dollars in military aid from the U.S. and other Western allies. Secretary of State Antony Blinken making a surprise trip to Ukraine this week, meeting with President Volodymyr Zelensky and announcing another $2.6 billion in assistance for the country and its neighbors. Discussing the aid package Friday alongside NATO's Secretary General in Brussels. Supporting Ukraine's capacity to defend itself. Sustaining pressure on Russia for its aggression. Ensuring that Ukraine is in the strongest position when conditions are right for negotiations. Meanwhile, concerns continue to grow over renewed shelling, causing more damage to Ukraine's Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, the largest of its kind in Europe. The head of the UN's nuclear watchdog worried about a possible nuclear catastrophe, warning the situation is precarious. A nuclear power plant can never be a pawn of war. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. God save the king.
A new era as a new ruler takes the throne. The changes happening in England plus. This has been a challenge. A fast moving fire putting up a fight. The reason fire crews are having a challenge with the mosquito fire. Welcome back. Well, this is what it currently looks like outside the Buckingham Palace. It's currently around 715 in the morning as a memorial grows for late Queen Elizabeth. But it was a different atmosphere yesterday after it was formally proclaimed that Queen Elizabeth's son Charles III is now the new king. This video at St. James Palace in London shows crowds celebrating the news. The event marks a series of formalities that will unfold over the next several days leading up to the Queen's funeral. ABC's Faith Abube is in London with the details. New details of the preparations underway for Queen Elizabeth's final journey. Buckingham Palace revealing Britain's longest reigning monarch will lie in state for four days at Westminster Hall before her funeral on September 19th. Saturday, members of the royal family seen in Windsor. The new prince and princess of Wales sharing a quiet moment of reflection with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. All four taking a close look at floral tributes piling outside the castle. I think everybody hopes that the death of Queen Elizabeth will hopefully be able to start to repair some of the damage and divisions that have happened in the royal family between the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Harry and Meghan and, and the rest of the senior royals. Well-wishers like Annie got a chance to speak with the senior royals. They were every bit as lovely as you would hope. I think a bit subdued, but just so thankful. I think that so many people were here to support them, all of them. King Charles III and Queen Camilla also greeted well-wishers before entering Clarence House. Earlier in the day, the pageantry of royal traditions on full display. For the first time in history, the world getting a front row seat to a new British monarch formally ascending the throne. Prince That's William, Queen Camilla and other members of the Accession so Council formally proclaiming Charles me. III the king. Charles signing the proclamation at St. James Palace, his coronation day not yet revealed. Across London, gun salutes firing off. For the first time since 1952, the national anthem now with the phrase, God save the king. In London, Faith Abube, ABC News. Now to our fire watch in Northern California. Governor Gavin Newsom has secured several federal funds to help fight the mosquito fire in El Dorado and Placer counties. The fast moving fire has burned over 33,000 acres with no reported containment. Hundreds of people are under mandatory evacuation orders. We're continuing to work hard for the community of Forest Hill to make sure that, that everything is safe in the meantime and then get people back as quickly as possible and repopulate the areas that have been evacuated. Fire officials say the fire is burning and difficult terrain, including steep canyons. And up north from us in Riverside County, crews have made progress on the deadly Fairview fire. So far, 28,000 acres have burned since it broke out on Monday. Firefighters now have it 43% contained. Two people have died and 35 structures have either been damaged or destroyed. Several communities are still under evacuation orders. Now the ABC 10 News Pinpoint Weather Super 7-Day Forecast. All right, let's get a check in with the weather with ABC 10 News Pinpoint Meteorologist Megan Perry. Megan, please give me some good news. I know, I finally have some good news. You know, I, this weekend was actually supposed to be really nice, and then a hurricane formed and changed everything. So next week, okay. bearing a tropical storm forming is going to be really comfortable. I'm looking forward to it. And it's a lot quieter now than it was yesterday as we look towards downtown from one Columbia place. And the recent rain has helped out with our water year deficit. So the water year actually ends at the end of this month. So we're going to start from scratch on October 1st. We've now dropped to below three inches below where we should be, which is still not great, but it's, it's a drop in the bucket. And we'll take anything we can get, especially I cannot emphasize how great it is that we've seen rain after the very hot, dry summer months before we get into Santa Ana season. So this system now moving away from us, bringing our first rain that we've seen downtown since May 20th. So it's been months since we've seen rainfall, at least in the downtown area. Of course, our mountain and desert areas have seen some rain. And it's dry right now as we look towards pinpoint Doppler Live. Temperatures 
pretty warm. It is pretty muggy. Temperatures are in the 70s for most of us and our dew point temperatures also hovering right around 70 degrees. That's sticky. So whenever the dew point temperature and the actual temperature are closer together, it's humid. I know you can feel that it is going to remain quite sticky through Monday, maybe into Tuesday, but Wednesday that humidity is going to start to go down and it really drops even more so by the end of the week. We're in the low to mid 80s for most of the county tomorrow, 70s in our mountain areas as well as in La Jolla and Mission Beach at 79 degrees. We will be warming back into the 90s for the deserts. So pick your neighborhood. This is your chance for rain. I'm going to fast forward to tomorrow afternoon, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Peak activity for any showers or thunderstorms will be near our mountain communities. But anywhere in the county, just like today, there is that chance for some sprinkles, some drizzle, a stray shower, or even that rumble of thunder. And some of those showers could be heavy at times, but they will be more ice Isolated. And then that chance for showers diminishes even more so into Monday. And then it looks like Tuesday, maybe the mountain and desert areas could keep a slim chance, but for the most part, we're going to be ending this pattern. Temperatures will be trending near to below average and by Wednesday and really even more so by next weekend, it will be less humid. So what does that mean? Not only are the temperatures going to be cooler and more comfortable, the overnight temperatures are also going to be getting more comfortable. Of course, the Padres are in town. They're taking on the Dodgers tomorrow at 110. We're going to be right around 81 degrees. We'll see a mix of sun and clouds. And yes, it is going to be muggy. Our inland neighborhoods, temperature is going to stay in the 80s into next week, which is actually pretty close to normal. We'll also see a mix of clouds tomorrow. And look at that. By the afternoon, there is that slight chance for a shower or even thunderstorm activity. Temperatures will drop back into the 60s into the overnight hours into next week, while the mountain areas will actually see lows in the 50s. Afternoon temperatures in the 70s. Again, best chance for showers and thunderstorms over the next couple of days will be in the mountain areas, then the desert locations, and we may see that slight chance through Tuesday. But some good news, yes. some relief and humidity on the way. All right, thanks so much, Megan. Well, tomorrow marks the 21st anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Coming up, we will share how several organizations across the county are remembering this dark time in our nation's history. Skycam Views, sponsored by Carlsbad Solar. Tonight, the payment processor Visa Inc. says it plans to start separately categorizing sales at gun shops. Visa said it would adopt the International Organization for Standardization's new merchant code for gun sales, which was announced on Friday. Now, until Friday, gun store sales were considered general merchandise. Visa will be joining MasterCard and American Express, which will also be categorizing such sales. Well, tomorrow marks the 21st anniversary of 9-11. And in honor of all the memories and the thousands of people we've lost, a San Diego group hosted a memorial stair climb today. At the Hilton Bayfront, groups met this morning to climb 110 flights of stairs. It's the same number of stairs at the Twin Towers. Each participant also wore a name of a first responder that died because of the tragic event. All proceeds went to the nonprofit Firefighter Aid. Their purpose is to help firefighters and their families in crisis. And here are other events happening around the county tomorrow to mourn the lives lost during the 9-11 attacks. National City will hold a remembrance ceremony at Fire Station 34 from 845 in the morning until 930. Another remembrance ceremony will be held tomorrow aboard the USS Midway Museum at 1030 in the morning. And San Diego State's Army Reserve Officers Training Corps will place 2,977 individual flags in the ground on the south end of Hepner Hall, which represents each victim of the attack. And make sure to tune in to ABC 10 News at 5, 6 and 8 in the morning, where we will bring you coverage on the anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. Well, there's much more coming up next on ABC 10 News after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Several foster youth in San Diego are getting guidance from local community members. Today, the nonprofit Just in Time for Foster Youth held a career fair for 50 transitioning youth looking to take their next or maybe first steps towards a career. At the event, there were several job recruiters as well as mentors to help those looking to start their own business. And for the young entrepreneurs, there was even a, sh a Shark Tank like competition where the winner took home a $3,000 prize. Manny Machado had another big night at Petco Park. Coming up, the impact on the playoff race as the Padres and Dodgers continue their weekend series. Now, the Virgin Hotels Las Vegas Sports Extra. 
Everything was a little more comfortable in week two at Snapdragon Stadium. Welcome to the show. I'm Ben Higgins. We'll have plenty of college football news coming up, but first the Padres were looking to make it back to back wins over the Dodgers after their walk off victory last night at Petco Park. Blake Snell on the mound this evening scoreless until the third. Freddie Freeman coming through with two outs for LA. The RBI single makes it one nothing. Padres would even things up against Julio Urias in the bottom of the inning. Manny Machado with a moonshot to left field. Stays in the air long enough to clear the wall. Just like that, it was all even at one. But Snell ran into trouble in the fifth. Lost the plate, loaded the bases for the dangerous Trey Turner, who finds the gap and drives.